this video is following on from the previous video, we've got the same initial flow conditions in this video. We've got 3.36 meters cubed per second going down a river that's three meters wide, and the initial flow depth is 1.9 meters. The difference here is in the previous video, we put a bump in the river that was 0.3 meters high, and in this video, we've got a much larger bump that's 1.1 meters high, and we're gonna see what that does to the flow depth over the obstruction and after the obstruction. So just like the previous video, our initial flow depth is 1.9 meters high. So we can say that our initial flow depth is gonna be 1.9 meters high. So we'll call that Y1. So Y1 is 1.9 meters. And what we can do is draw a line across from that 1.9 meter flow depth and see what our initial level of specific energy is. So if we draw a line across, we should see that that will intercept the y-axis of the graph at 1.9 meters because that's our flow depth. And to find our specific energy, we're looking for the point at which that flow depth intersects the profile and at that point we can draw a line down and get our specific energy level. So if we draw a line down, we get a level of specific energy just above 1.9 meters. I'm actually gonna round that down now and say that our specific energy at one is 1 1.9 meters. So our specific energy at one, I'm gonna say it's 1.9 meters because that's the point at which our flow depth intersects the profile. And if we draw a line down to the X axis, that gives us our level of specific energy. So what we wanna know is what's gonna happen when we put a 1.1 meter blockage in the channel. And like we said in the previous video, what this obstruction is gonna do is it's gonna take, ener it's gonna take energy out of the flow. So the total energy between 0.1 and 0.2 are gonna remain the same, but the actual energy in the flow is gonna be reduced at two because we're gonna be losing energy in the flow to the potential energy of this blockage. So our specific energy at two is gonna be our specific energy at one minus that blockage, which is converting energy in the flow that would have been in terms of flow depth and kinetic energy into potential energy. So our specific energy at two is going to be our specific energy at one minus the energy we're losing to this blockage, that delta Z, that 1.1 meters. And that gives us an energy at two of 0.8 meters. So what we're going to get is a new level of specific energy in our flow above this blockage. So the new level of specific energy is going to be 0.8 meters. So we can draw a line at 0.8 meters and this is gonna be our new level of specific energy. And all we've done here is just shift specific energy on the x-axis down by 0.8 meters. So this is just equivalent to our delta Z. This is just the energy, sorry, 1.1 meters. This is just the energy that we've lost in the flow from putting this blockage in. So we've just shifted it down by 1.1 to 0.8 on the x-axis. So what we're gonna to do to find the flow depth is we're just gonna follow the profile exactly the same as the last video. We're gonna follow the profile from where our initial flow depth and specific energy level started. And we're gonna keep on going until we get to our new flow depth. And what we can see is the intersect of the new level of specific energy with the profile is occurring at 0.5 meters, which is also the critical flow depth. So at this point in the profile, there's only one possible flow depth that we can get, which is 0.5 meters. So the flow depth above this blockage is gonna be 0.5 meters, which is also the critical flow depth so we've, we've reduced our specific energy and it's fell exactly on the critical flow depth. So that gives us a critical flow depth over this obstruction, which is 0.5 meters. 
So our flow profile is going to reduce from 1.9 meters down to 0.5 meters over this over this blockage. The final thing we can do is try to work out what the final flow depth Y3 is going to be. So in the previous video all of our flows were subcritical. The difference here is that we've gone down the profile and we've hit the critical flow depth. And once you hit the critical flow depth, you get a transition from subcritical to supercritical flow. So because our flow depth has been reduced down to the sub to, down to the critical flow depth, we know that the downstream flow depth is now going to be supercritical because we've hit that critical flow depth. So after we move past the blockage, we go back to our initial level of specific energy, but now the flow depth is going to be the alternative flow depth when the flow is supercritical. So our new flow depth is going to be 0.2 meters, which is the alternate flow depth at that level of specific energy. So the specific energy is still at the initial level of specific energy, but because we've gone past the critical flow depth, because we've hit the critical flow depth, our final flow depth is now going to be supercritical. So our final flow depth Y3 is going to be 0.2 meters. So in this case, we started out with an initial specific energy level and a subcritical flow. The, the blockage was such that we lost 1.1 meters of energy to the flow, which took us down to this, the, the critical flow depth. So the flow depth over this obstacle was the critical flow depth. And because we hit the critical flow depth, that means we had a transition from su subcritical to supercritical flow. So the downstream flow depth is going to be supercritical, which corresponded to a flow depth of 0.2 meters.